Vito Dorito, lead quantitative analyst, S&P Global Plus. Good morning, Vito. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Vito, I just want to have a very quick comment on the non-farm payrolls, which are definitely slowing down. Um, the expectations were about 800,000. We got 661,000. So how do you interpret the data? Uh, I think it's pretty normal uh, given the, um, uh, the, the the further slowdown uh, that the market is experiencing right now. Uh, it has to be said that um, uh, uh, this is the first um, uh, uh, the first number that the non-farm payroll um, um, uh, uh, is below the one million since August, basically. Uh, obviously, uh, right now uh, the job market is uh, the growth in this in the job market is uh, pretty sluggish. Uh, it will probably continue to be uh, to be so, particularly because the second wave um, is um, introducing a lot more uh, restrictions and uh, 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 commerce and trade is actually um, slowing down uh, on a global on a global scales. Um, job wise, uh, um, the, uh, the NFP uh, was expected to be uh, below one million, as you correctly said. Clearly, this is uh, much weaker than expectation. Uh, and um, it's important to say that in March, between March and April, something like 22 million jobs have been lost in the U.S. Uh, and only uh, around like 10, 11 million have been recovered. So the fact that the um, um, uh, uh, the, the non-farm payroll is uh, so weak uh, is just a confirmation that the, the market is not in great shape and that uh, the the the, uh, the pandemic is still biting the market, and that the recovery will will um, will still be slow. Uh, which is certainly not good as well for the energy market. But before we move to the energy market, I just want to show also very quickly the unemployment rate uh, for September, which is at seven point nine percent, below the eight percent. So w we do see some uh, controversy here between uh, the payrolls and the unemployment rate. How would you comment that? Uh, well, uh, when it comes to uh, to employment, you, uh, the non-farm payroll takes in account only certain type of jobs, of course. So uh, um, uh, uh, that obviously don't have anything to do with with agriculture and you know, uh, some other jobs that are seasonal. So uh, it's normal that there are some kind of like imbalances between the two. Um, um, uh, I would say though that the non-farm payroll is closely watched because. Um, uh, um, uh, you know, it's mainly like a great indicator for uh, the the what it's called the uh, the third sector, so the service sector, which is uh, one of the largest uh, um, uh, in developed countries. is one of the largest uh, employment sector in in, uh, in developed countries, and this is precisely why it's so closely watched. Uh, it, it may, it's also the it may it, we may have like a picking up of the. Um, uh, of the uh, unemployment rate, uh, like in the future, we will see what's going to what's going to happen. Uh, also, because the unemployment rate is calculated using um, uh, um, certain type of metrics, the unemployment rate is um, the, the one that is that we are looking at is um, uh, is actually tracking the people that are out of work but that are act actively looking for work. Uh, but it, it it does not count, for instance, people that are out of work but are not looking for work, or they stop looking for work. So it's it's a very uh, um, uh, it's a very sp specific and uh, um, uh, I would say technical um, uh, um, uh, uh, technical indicator when it comes to um, uh, to non um, uh, to uh, uh, to the job market. That's why I'm saying um, uh, it may take a little while for uh, for the two to match. But uh, the non-farm payroll is more accurate when it comes to a uh, uh, month in, month out. It, it is, it's a better, um, it's a better indicator. So um, let's just move very quickly to the energy sector. We did, uh, we do see a little bit of decline when it comes to crude oil prices today. Uh, the WTI is trading thirty six dollars per barrel, which is off about uh, four point twenty seven percent. The Brent is trading at thirty nine dollars per barrel and off by four point thirteen percent. So there is a little bit of downturn if we consider the macroeconomic data globally, because then we we saw some bright spots coming from uh, Europe when it comes when it comes to PMI manufacturing. Uh, so I was wondering, what is the macro data suggesting in terms of crude oil price recovery? In a sentence, uh, slow growth. Slow growth. This is <laughs> gr slow growth. This is basically like the, the shortest answer I can possibly give you. 
uh, the demand for um, the reminder of the 2020, of uh, 2020 uh, was weaker, and it actually uh, it's going to be probably even weaker than expected. Um, so uh, the uncertainty is the, uh, the the buzzword right now in the mar in the in the crude oil market. A lot of people are are wait, are expecting the um, this uncertainty to persist uh, throughout the, um, uh, the the whole month of October, November, and December. Uh, and um, uh, things may, uh, I mean, the, this slow growth can also be uh, a key theme also. It looks like we lost Vitor Torito. There is some um, technicalities over there. Let's just have a very quick look. Okay, we have him back on the line. Vitor, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, go ahead. We, we, so we've lost you for a second. This is something that can happen, obviously, during these uh, crazy times. Absolutely. Uh, that's the beauty of, uh, of, of live TV television. So as I was saying is that um, the, the growth will be slow. It will remain slow. Uh, it probably uh, probably slower than expected by many, uh, and um, this um, the slow growth can also um, and probably uh, gonna spill also in the first quarter of 2021. Uh, many people, many market participants were actually expecting uh, the, um, the pandemic to be something confined uh, within the um, within 2020. This is not gonna be the case. Probably slow growth is going to be still uh, the key uh, buzzword in the beginning of uh, uh, in the, of 2021. Uh, in 2021 will also be a key year when it comes to businesses, particularly because within the energy industry there will be a lot of businesses that will eat each other up, a lot of mergers and acquisition, a lot of businesses that will be forced to sh to issue more bonds because they obviously yeah, uh, low uh, oil prices or uh, energy prices in general. Uh, will make more difficult for them to raise profits and make money. So we will have more mergers and acquisition, um, the more uh, uh, um, more old style uh, takeovers. Uh, we will have a lot of companies that will issue more share. Uh, they will ask uh, stakeholders to um, refinance the debt and uh, all any sort of like debt restructuring uh, process. They could actually um, uh, uh, could uh, uh, could be the best for them. But this is probably what's going to happen in 2021. At the moment, demand was weak and it will remain weak, uh, not just for crude, but particularly for some crude products, um, in particular, uh, uh, jet fuel oil. Jet fuel oil was already weak during the summer, but right now, um, getting into the fall, um, the demand is plummeting again. So uh, we expect this to, rem to persist also for quite a few months. Uh, we, we, we saw some very important signals from a major oil companies, uh, which are definitely under pressure. A lot of companies cutting uh, jobs and not only a stock index of fuse oil and gas companies is down about 57% yesterday, close off by almost uh, 3%. What does it mean about the single companies? I'm referring to the major giants like um, we, we can just pick up a few of them in terms of fuse companies like Exxon, Chevron, etc. Well, actually, there are two things right now that are influ that are negatively uh, influencing the price of um, uh, some of these stocks. Uh, first of all, obviously, um, uh, any um, energy companies, uh, particularly the old ones, the major ones, are based on oil uh, yet. So obviously, lower oil prices um, uh, automatically means uh, um, uh, lower uh, share prices uh, when it comes to Shell, Chevron, and all the big uh, the big oil as they as they are called in jargon. Uh, so it's pretty normal that we have um, uh, um, uh, this um, uh, uh, this downtrend in uh, right now because the market is plummeting, the equity market is also going down. It's certainly not. Um, it's it certainly not where it used to be uh, a few um, a few months ago. Um, the uh, energy prices are below um, are below uh, forty dollar per barrel, even Brent, uh, which is like a, a massive psychological level on the downside. Um, as far as down, downside risk is concerned, so it's pretty normal that uh, a lot of uh, particular financials right now are selling um, uh, these stocks, and this is precisely why they are plummeting. The other one is um, uh, the uh, the energy transition revolution. Some of these companies have been blamed for not being too active on uh, 
um, uh, not enough active on uh, um, uh, as far as renewables uh, investments are concerned. So um, uh, uh, some hedge funds and asset managers uh, are also looking at um, uh, uh, right now the, at the new uh, trend, which are the ESG investments, which basically are pools of uh, um, or indices that track the performance of uh, virtuous companies, uh, which um, are sustainable, uh, that have a very low um, uh, uh, carb uh, carbon footprint, and they, you know, they are green friendly, uh, eco friendly. So some of these companies, obviously, um, uh, some of these indices uh, do not involve um, uh, uh, um, uh, right. some of the big oil companies. And this is also suppressing uh, the, the stock. Right. Thank you very much. Vitor Dorito, Lead Quantitative Analyst, S&P Global Plus. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day. Thank you. Have a great day.